Day, Father's Day was a day that hurt because it was that night before Father's Day that my, my wife lost that baby. And we had just, you know, when your wife comes to you and says, Honey, <laughs> I got to talk to you. And all of a sudden you start realizing, I'm going to be a dad again. And, and that had sunk in. And we were going to announce to our church on Father's Day. And it was the night of, right before Father's Day, that she miscarried the child. So she laid at home in a fetal position, traumatized, just, did I eat something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Laying in that fetal position, blaming herself. And can I tell you, mamas in the room, you didn't do that. You had nothing to do with those babies you lost. And, um, but it hurts and it's hard to talk about. Miscarriage is one of those things that a lot of people don't know how to talk about. And her mother had never had a miscarriage. My mother had never had a miscarriage. We didn't know who to turn to. And, and so when, when we got pregnant with Colton and, and we started becoming parents again, we kind of, we never did heal from that hurt. We just kind of buried it. Does that, is that a, I think a lot of us have some buried hurts. Well, the day he comes bouncing into the front room, he goes up to his mom and, and she's working on something. And I'm sitting over at the table about where, you can see where the drums are. That's about how far I am away from this conversation. And he looks up at his mom and says, Mom, I have two sisters. And she's busy. And, she's not, and he goes, Mom, I have two sisters. How do you explain to a three-year-old who just turned four that babies die in their mommy's tummies without scaring them to death? It's just not age-appropriate conversations. Do you all understand that? You just don't do that. And so she's like, no frame of reference. Here we are, five-plus years later from the miscarriage. She doesn't know what he's referring to. And she goes, you mean your cousin you just saw, your friends? And he's like, no, Mommy. You had a baby die in your tummy, didn't you? You talk about silence. And I still remember her... And I could hear her, and she, it was, it was it, have you ever heard moms do a loud whisper? <laughs> okay, who told you? It was kind of like, who gave me up? Who told you about that hurt? And he's like, well, she did, mommy. She told me she died in your tummy. Turned around and started to bounce out of the room, and my wife exploded. The movie was way nicer than the real scene. <laughs> She stood up and screamed at Colton. I've never heard Colton Todd Burpo yell louder ever. Have you? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Colton Todd Burpo, you don't tell me something like that and walk away. You get back here right now. I mean, that room went from light and airy to tense and, ooh, mom was ready to kill. Seriously. And this time I remember Colton looking at me and I'm like, I got nothing. <laughs> and so he tiptoes back to his mom this time. And he's like, it's okay, mom. She's okay. God adopted her, mommy. She gets down on her knees, puts her hands on his shoulders. You mean Jesus adopted her? No, mom. His dad did. I mean... I've never had anyone explain the Trinity to me before or try to correct me, but my four-year-old could. It's just, it's just so messed up, okay? Because he's right, you know? And it's like, she's okay. She's okay. And then, well, what does she look like? And then, what's her name? And I remember him saying, like in the movie, this is correct. Well, you all never gave her a name. She doesn't have a name. And I'm like, well, didn't God go ahead and name her? So she's got a name now. So if you've had a miscarriage, can I encourage you? Name that child. Pray to God. He'll let you know if it was a boy or a girl. And, and what a healing thing to go through to give your child a name. And then he starts complaining, well, Dad, Mom, she, she just wouldn't stop hugging me. And I didn't like that very much. <laughs> and in heaven, you still get told no. Think about that for a little bit. Aren't you glad God's in control up there? Can you think? Look what we did down here, right? That's why heaven is still heaven. So he still had to let his sister hug him. <laughs> and, um, but I remember him telling me, Dad, I told her that when you get to heaven, you'd give your little girl hugs because you always give your kids hugs. 
And by the time, you can imagine, we're just in tears, we're crying. And that hurt was replaced by that peace where the Bible talks about the peace that passes understanding. And in 10 minutes, that, that hurt that we had buried, God reached back in and touched and healed it. That really brought me to the point of conflict over the book. I never wanted to write a book and people came to me. And this whole experience with my daughter was where God just got in my face again and he said, well, you remember the peace you experienced when you found out about your daughter in heaven? I said, oh God, that was wonderful. And he's like, well, is it right for you to keep that kind of peace to yourself? And that's when I'm like, no, it's not. I got to share it. So that whole living room experience for us is now, I hope, a living room experience for a lot of people. Because let me tell you, those babies, those kids, those aborted ones, God's got them. And they're good. And how many of you, especially older generations, you know, your parents never talked about that, right? It was kind of taboo. How many of you have brothers and sisters in heaven that you're going to meet? You better get ready. Families are bigger in heaven than they are down here.